Welcome to the In Story Show. I'm Devorah Spillman, your host, and I am thrilled today to welcome Dipika Del Menico. And Dipika is an Ayurvedic physician, an author, and a speaker. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to delve into the theme of the show, which is Dare to Be Seen. It's finally your turn and how to come out of hiding. And our tech this time is how to trust that all-knowing healer that is inside of every one of you. And what does that have to do with regeneration and leaving a legacy? And a lot of other super interesting discoveries that Dipika has made along her journey. So Dipika, welcome. So glad you're here. Thank you for having me. It, it's an absolute delight. It, it's a real privilege to be here with you and your beautiful audience of shining, shining souls. <laughs> so like everybody, you have to start with your story. Being a storyteller, I make everyone start with their story. And, you know, I'm sure that you were probably not always this amazing physician and healer. So tell us a little bit about where you started out and how did you come on, to, to go on this journey of what you do now. I'd love to, you know, and that just makes me think, wow, of course, to be an Ayurvedic physician, to be a pulse reader um, requires incredible softness and sensitivity and refinement and consciousness. And, you know, honestly speaking, in my 20s, and I had none of those things consciously <laughs> awake in me. And um, I was, so I had a lot of clean up to do we were I was working as a law clerk and and I had been for oh since I left school um I'd gone straight to a legal firm and had the great fortune of taking on incredible responsibility at a very early age I was working in an incredibly intense stressful environment and I had very little um awakened relationship to myself and um, very few holistic tools and resources to support myself. So I was on a very finite timeline in terms of how long my body could do what I was doing. You know, I was drinking a lot of alcohol. I was, you know, I was smoking marijuana to de-stress. I, I was doing whatever I could to get through. But one day I was sitting in the office and I'd probably just come back from sitting in the, you know, from being in the bathroom, looking at the anxiety physically emerge in my body as a red rash and my head in my hands thinking, oh, how long can I keep doing this? And I thought if I wake up and I'm 40 and I'm still doing what I'm doing now, something in me will die. And I knew that I had to change what I was doing and pursue something that lit me up in a more meaningful way. So, the, um, you know, I also spent a lot of time in nature, you know, and, and I'd be in the bush or in the forest hiking and camping most weekends. But how I felt in that environment was not carrying through to my day-to-day -day experience in my working life. And so I didn't know what to do, but I studied. My starting point was I studied naturopathy. And between applying to, and I resigned from my job, between resigning and, and, and studying, I put on my backpack and I spent a year in South America. But the search really took off in earnest and deepened when at the end of my first year of naturopathy, I deferred to join my partner at the time who was transferred to Los Angeles as a foreign correspondent for a, a big news limited uh, company. And I moved across to join him. And six weeks, we were to be there for three years, six weeks after I arrived, on the, the day after my 29th birthday, he dropped dead suddenly in my arms. What? And... It was, it was like my life as a prism, a crystal prism had been smashed to smithereens by a baseball bat in one moment. And I experienced, of course, indescribable grief, loss, confusion, the, the whole gamut of emotions. Mm -hmm. But I also, 12 months later, began to experience um, 
and have understanding of what anxiety really is and panic attacks. And that turned me deeply to a direction I'd not really traveled before. So I put the backpack down and instead of going around the world in search of adventures, I went one inch in the other direction. <laughs> which led me to living in an ashram in India uh, and where I met my, my uh, teacher of Ayurvedic medicine and pulse reading, whom I apprenticed with for years. So that was really the beginning of my having relationship with what it is to heal and to start to cultivate relationship and listen bolster the capacity to listen to the indwelling healer mm. so i so now help us maybe a little bit with some of what you learned about i i love that idea of listening to the indwelling healer what say a little bit more about what that is like what did you discover about that and like how might someone start to explore that yeah well within each of us within each of every unique being and every person who is listening to this now in you there is an indwelling one who knows you so intimately so completely so authentically there's no masks there's no nonsense there's no game playing there's just love and this indwelling one you could call it your inner guru it's the innate teacher in you is waiting yearning for you to come home to self because this indwelling one knows how to navigate you, knows what you need to be doing for self, to live a connected life, to live a life where you can respond to the challenges, can meet the challenges from a place of, mm, let's call it, we could say, from a place of being neutral, but a place of less re reactivity, let's say. So not going to, into a complete meltdown and, and, and reacting from moment to moment with this in pervasive internal chaos. And it starts with listening. Mm -hmm. Listening is the starting point, I would say, to cultivate relationship with this indwelling healer this indwelling physician, I call it, because we go out and seek help. But ultimately, all the support that we seek, if applied in earnest, holistic principles, is all designed to bring us back that one inch in this direction. So my work and all I do as a physician is about using the tools of ancient, that the ancient practical wisdom of Ayurveda, the, the wisdom, the love of the human being, the deep wisdom of anthroposophy and anthroposophical medicine, yoga, Nada yoga, Sanskrit, everything I know is all designed to support one to come in to be able to listen and understand the language of the resonance. So say more about this, like what is, what is the language of resonance? Um, and then, and then maybe we'll go into gesture, your, what you said about that. Right. Okay. <laughs> the language of resonance, you know, everything in the entire universe, as we know, and you know, it's science will tell us we can look at, medical science, we can look at science as we know it, physical science, we can look at esoteric science. But everything in the entire universe is composed of energy in various forms and densities. Of course, energy is very dense and compact in a human body. 
our physical architecture is the densest um, form of resonance that our being has. But we also have other bodies. We have other members of our being that are composed of different qualities, different resonance. And these resonance are all from the same source, if you will. And they all have particular qualities that like all simple mathematical equations are composed of patterns, are composed of frequencies and patterns. And we don't have to be um, a mathematician or study physics to understand them. But we have to listen in and we have to refine ourselves to experience them because they are composed of consciousness. They are composed of truth. So how do we know when this indwelling one is speaking to us? Because we are overcome with a clarity. We hear something that defies what we have the capacity to think mm -hmm. of. You know, it, it, it's, it's all knowing from the heart that defies logic. And so this is, this is listening into this language of resonance. And, and so resonance composed of quality have various qualities. And so we can think about the kind of qualities that we wish to cultivate in our life. And does our resonance match it? Or we can think about what we're experiencing now What are the qualities? What is the resonance? This is a this is a great way to explore um, these these qualities. In Ayurveda, we call them the gunas. There's gunas. There's sattva, rajas, and tamas. Everything in nature needs them in various proportion uh, for life to exist. They have to be there. But sattva is that which is pure and light, truthful, pure, light. And rajas is that which is driven, sparky energy, ultimately destabilizing. And tamas is that which is dull, inert, and heavy. Now, to, to lead the sort of life that we're striving for with, with fulfillment and vitality and to love our story instead of retelling the same old story that's boring the, excuse me, I'm sorry, it, boring the shit out of ourselves and everyone around us, right? It's boring. You know, and this beloved within you is getting a bit bored with it too. It's like, hey, there's a better story. Come and unfold it. And, and so, you know, if we're stuck, then it would suggest that there's a predominance of this tamasic, this dull, inert energy mm -hmm. that needs to be activated. And so, again, we can work with resonance to activate because this is sonic stuff we're talking about. Like, zzz. <laughs> it wiggles and jiggles from the subtle to the grosser. So it starts with the mental stuff. It starts with the heart stuff. <laughs> well, it, I just find it so fascinating how so much people are going back and taking these ancient traditions and bringing them forward and then intersecting them with other things, you know, that you've, learned um because i know you said there was something really powerful about sound that has come, come into your work that is probably not as directly from ayurvedic right well it's not widely practiced in ayurveda i mean mantra is an incredibly refined tool of ayurvedic medicine and and of ayurveda and um but it's not so widely practiced um, in relationship to how broadly Ayurvedic medicine is practiced. Mantra is, is not so commonly prescribed. And yet it is one of the most uh, profound, refined, penetrating tools of mm -hmm. Ayurveda. Wow. But wow. one has to, you know, as powerful tools, just as you would not give a scalpel to an experienced, an inexperienced surgeon, you know, I'd want them starting to practice with a bread knife, maybe in a piece of dough before giving a scalpel to practice on my body. <laughs> and, and it can be similar with mantra. You know, these are penetrating. So for one to be working with mantra therapeutically, 
I would encourage one to be steeped experientially and really know what they're doing because you're working with these qualities of sound. You know, sound is the original medicine. Mm, Interesting. And it is the medicine of our time. And it is the medicine of where we're going. And the greatest thing is you don't have to do anything to get it. It's there. It's in you. It's all part of this indwelling innate physician, this healer. And so Ayurvedic medicine, Ayurveda is the is one of the oldest healing philosophies known to mankind. You know, it's more than 5,000 years old. It was gifted to humanity out of love for humankind. Because even 5,000 years ago, the great enlightened um, rishis could see that humankind were in a pickle. They were deviated from their own true nature. They had trouble navigating, finding their way. Who am I? Where am I going? I'm in a new season of my life. What does that look like? How do I master navigate it? Now, in contemporary life, it's full on. The world's pretty chaotic right now. And so it's even harder to navigate our way. But these gifts that were given to us in Ayurveda are as applicable now as they were then. They were for humankind. Mm -hmm. One of my tasks is to be a bridge, if you will, to create a renaissance. Yes, Mm -hmm. we speak a different language. Language is changing all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, conditions on earth are different now than they were 5,000 years ago. And we only have to look in a dictionary. And there are words in a dictionary now that I still say, oh, oh, really? That's printed in a dictionary? That's common language? Or, you know, there's language I don't understand. My teenagers, they, you know, sometimes I'm paddling hard to keep up with, with the language. It's, it's always changing. Yet these healing principles remain the same. Mm-hmm. So to create a renaissance is to bring it forward in a way that it can be applied and understood and uptaken now for mm-hmm. one's own healing benefit. Mm-hmm. Because life is so precious. It is so, so very precious. And we all have a task mm-hmm. to fulfill or we wouldn't take birth. And, and so our gesture is what we bring forward. And, you know, there's the, our gesture is how we show up. Mm-hmm. It's our sound, the sound of our being. Mm. And so um, there's seven living processes applicable to all living things. And the first begins with the very intake, with the incoming breath, where the outer life, we take it in, to our inner world Mm. and then we have to start to digest it and then we have to metabolize it and bring warmth to it we have to be able to derive nourishment from it we then move into a very interesting phase of secretion where we start to sort it out what does it mean to me we question it and then we move into maintenance how do i maintain this And then we move into growth and maturation. Mm. We evolve, we mature. As women, we become the wise elders and we share our story. We've done the hard yards. Ideally, we're kicking back and someone's bringing us cups of tea. (laughs) Ideally. And then, I was just, and then the the final step, of course, is we regenerate. Mm. we reproduce and this is our legacy this is the harvest we bring to the table of life what seeds are we sowing for those to come because our seeds are influenced by those that have been Mm So what are we bringing to those to come? And if we're connected, 
in here right. a whole lot easier <laughs> <laughs> so I just I, I just say it's just so beautiful I feel I feel like it's so encouraging and hopeful there are so many avenues available to all of us to bring this higher more refined spiritual creative story whatever out and share it in the world so um, you know, when you mentioned to me that I had a little process that had to do with regeneration, with leaving a legacy, it really sparked my imagination because, of course, one of the aspects of telling your story has an aspect of leaving a legacy as well in a very different way. So, um, so if you're game, maybe you'll lead us. I know I asked you to do like a shorter version, and I'm sure they can come find you for the longer version. But, yes, yes, of um, course. Okay, let's let's give it a go, shall we? Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. So I invite everybody, if it's safe to do so, you may like to close your eyes and to get comfortable and park and leave at the door whatever weighs you down, whatever is troubling you. And don't worry, if you really want to pick it up when you walk through that door again, it'll be there. But uh, just leave it for now and be as present as you can be and be as open to listening with the eyes of your heart. And in your vast, broad, rich imagination, I invite you to picture you are arriving at a celebration. It's an honouring. It's a celebration of your life. And those who love you, those who know you, honour you, appreciate you, those you would like to honour, know and appreciate you, they're all there. And they're here to speak about you. They're here to share all that you have brought into their lives, into life, through service, through contribution, through your hard work, your efforts, through your being, by you simply showing up and being you. They're taking their turns in speaking. And you're sitting there in recognition, receiving the love, the gratitude, the nourishment of acknowledgement. You're receiving all the rich recognition of the seeds you have sown, of the gesture of your very being in this life. Now just, I invite you to imagine how this feels. How this feels in your entire being. How this feels in your body. How this feels in your feeling heart. How this feels in your mind. You're illuminated. You're absolutely lit up. You're shining pure radiance. Now, I invite you to thank yourself 
for showing up to this occasion, to thank yourself for the permission of acknowledgement, to thank yourself for the capacity to regenerate, to thank yourself for the harvest that you bring to this table of life, that you are bringing and will continue to bring. And when you're ready, slowly moving your, wiggling your fingers and toes, and fluttering and then opening your eyes and coming back to the room, coming back to the present. Ah, it's always one of the harder parts when you lead an interview and then you go through the guided process and you have to come back like, no, I'm sorry, I'm not coming back. No, no. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, I can feel just the quietness of being to get just out of the, just out of the busy. And it feels like that's part of that regeneration is that new deeper stillness somehow. Mm. Mm. That's oh, really beautiful. So people who went through share, you know, you're invited to share any questions, your thoughts, your experience in the Facebook group will come in, we'll answer questions, respond, um, you know, the people will be invited, you'll, you'll be able to come in and connect with people in there. Um, just so that, you know, we start, I, you know, a lot of this is about honoring these other ways of knowing ourselves like like i love what you said also about that in the indwelling one mm -hmm. right like the interview i did before was about talking to god but it's the same idea yeah. with all these different names and this honoring of this way of knowing i think that was known in so much in ancient times and then was kind of shut down and brought back at least certain in western world um and I think we're, I think our souls are just calling us, or we're so starving, I think, for this realm and access to this. Um, so tell us a little bit about, a little more about what you do and your free gift that people can get and how, just so that that will help them move forward a little bit more with some of this beautiful healing wisdom that you have access to. Absolutely. So... I teach uh, online courses for women's health and particularly in navigating the second half of womanhood and woman's life and, uh, and run retreats and Conscious Woman Rising, which is a foundation devoted to raising our, our consciousness as, you know, really awakened, authentic, anchored women. And um, what I'm gifting to you today is 40 days of, it's the Radiant Woman Toolkit, and it's 40 days of tips and tools to both give you the practical and the inspired, to, to support you from day to day, to feel that spark, that impulse um, of really wishing to receive nourishment. Mm -hmm. I like to talk about food for the soul. So it's really food that. For the soul. And that's not necessarily what we put in our mouth. You know, food for the soul is, that's a whole another topic, isn't it, of course. But, <laughs> but that's what we're starved of more often than not. You know, um, that, that's what we're really hungry for. And, and, and I can tell you, that if, if we're hungry for it now, in this world, in this life, it's hungered for in the more subtle realms. Mm. It's hungered mm. for in the spiritual world. Mm. So well, we're all in collaboration here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and, I, and I, I think what's happening is that a lot of things are opening back up for us and we're, we are gaining this access and this ability to, to bring forward, uh, for many of us, a part of ourselves that we didn't get to activate 
in the first half of our life. Um, and I, you know, I like to say it's not too late. We get to have that authentic self back. And um, so, so everybody get Topeka's gift and take these 40 days from now and do this deep work and share what you got in the Facebook group. Because part of coming out of hiding is it's kind of owning where you're stuck and then being willing to receive these new tools to move forward. Um, so that is my hope for everybody who's watching is that they will, that you all feel inspired to kind of bravely share where you're stuck and, and move forward from that. Um, so as we kind of wrap up Topeka, will you leave us with a few words of, a few last words of inspiration. Sure. What's, what's coming up really strongly is it's okay to be stuck. You know, honour where you're at at this moment. If you are stuck and if you are in indescribable pain in your being, that it's, it's okay because it really is a gift to transmute into something else. And know that it, you are not alone in it. There's embedded tests for everybody in this life. We just don't know what they are and we don't know what's coming next. But, you know, these Ayurveda gives us incredible, incredible capacity to navigate it and not to remain in, um, entrenched and immovable with where we're at at this moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's what's so encouraging, right? We feel stuck, but we have tools. We aren't. We have ways to move forward. And so each one of these interviews is a new tool and they will help you. And, you know, I hope everyone watching that you will trust that intuitive knowing you have when somebody feels really connected and just right, just follow that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I love that you, you know, shared how you bravely left the job you were in to, because you knew it wasn't right. And so wherever you are, all of you who are listening, if you know you're in a place and it's not right, reach out and receive support from whoever really feels intuitively connected for you because you don't have to stay if it's not working. Like you really, it's not too late and you really can change and move forward and do something new if you're feeling called. Yeah, and also regardless of regardless of what's going on in your life, to those nearest and dearest, you know, and and my life, you know, like I've just given you a, a tiny pinprick share of one thing, and that was a good thing. That was one of the easier things in life to change. <laughs> but what life has taught me is that my happiness is not dependent upon my family and my loved ones happiness mm -hmm. or their lives being on track in the midst of the storm in the midst of the splat and the chaos where i feel like i'm drowning in the drama and the trauma of circumstances i know that i can still i can experience joy in my own heart <laughs> And, and everybody can. We have the capacity to cultivate that. And I say cultivate because it's hard to find the switch to just flick it on and off. But we can build that muscle. So. 100%. I have been on a whole theme of joy because we just came out of, in the time of recording this interview, we're just coming out of the Jewish holiday of Sukkot, which is called uh, Time of Joy. And so uh, that is perfect perfect way to wrap up because I've been teaching so much about how joy is of the moment exactly what you said no matter what's going on there is this moment of expanded joy that we can learn how to activate and cultivate as you said love yeah. that so much <laughs> beautiful so perfect so Topeka thank you so much for joining us and sharing your wonderful wisdom with us my, my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I wish you all so much love, so much joy. <laughs> so much joy, exactly. And what I always end with is my blessing that you should all go out in the world, share your story, live your purpose, 
and be a blessing. Bye, everybody.